Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's Saturday afternoon. We're Red Cedar Chamber Music. My name's Mira Kim. I'm the executive director, and I play the violin. And we have Carrie Bosch in here, the artistic director, playing the cello. We will be joined by both Adrian and Oliver, our sons, on cello and viola, respectively, as well as some other unnamed instruments. Um, if you'd like to download or view a program for today, uh, it's available at our website, www.redcedar.org, or you can click on the link that's in the des description box below. Um, a few housekeeping things before we get started. If you are experiencing a delay between the video and the sound, uh, we've heard from people that it's best to close out and then join again, and often that fixes it. I think that is generally a problem on your end rather than ours. And also, uh, we've included an emergency link in the description box below as well. At the very bottom, you have to scroll all the way down. If we experience technical difficulties, we will try to, we'll have to end this stream and problem solve and try to come back up on that link. Thanks. So our first uh, work tonight, uh, Bieber's Sonata Representativa, um, is, uh, requires a little more explanation. And in the program, there's a third page, which is all about a collaborative uh, commissioning project um, that, uh, that we did between 2008 and 2013. It involved the composer Philip Wharton and the children's book author Janet Burroway and illustrator John Vernon Lord. And there were four works in the project that integrated words, art, and music together um, and were presented in a, with projected images and narration or singing as, as the case may be. Um, three of the works, original music was composed by Philip Wharton for. However, the fourth work, which is what you're about to hear, um, was, was um, conceived as uh, a, a, a kind of um, student art project. So Janet Burroway wrote wonderful verses to go along with each of the characters in Bieber's Sonata. Now this is a little like Sasson's Carnival of the Animals. It's a, a kind of a set of variations, and each variation represents an animal or a character. So Janet composed the verses, and when we first performed this, and often when we've performed it, we've allowed uh, students to create art for this performance, so they get to see their own art, which was inspired by the music in the verses. Um, however, uh, this year, we knew we wanted to uh, present this and also to have models for the student art. And as it turns out, Philip Wharton, who is an incredible composer and violinist, is also a marvelous artist and grew up in Decorah where his grandfather um, was on the art faculty at Luther College and taught him many things. Um, so what you're going to hear today is Bieber's Sonata Representativa, uh, written in 1669, I believe, um, and verses by Janet Burroway, written in 2012, and you're going to see new artwork that was created just this month for this presentation. Um, by Philip Wharton. By Philip Wharton. And we'd like to thank Philip and Janet for their incredible contributions to this. In the, uh, in, the, in the content description, you can find more about them uh, at their websites. There are links, links down there. Um, and without further ado, Bieber's Sonata Representativa. Thank you. 
My name is Heinrich Ignaz Franz, Bieber, von Bieber. If by chance you think so many names are gross, pull up a chair and listen close. The Bieber in my name means beaver, and that means I'm an overachiever, although to make my music great, I hardly ever hibernate, but sit composing all year long so you can hear the forest song. My name is Heinrich Ignaz Franz, Bieber von Bieber. First, let's dance. with my ravishing tune, beguiling, appealing, enthralling, compelling, more famous at night than the sight of the moon. <laughs> Larva squishy, very. My song is hiccups and a hack. Two toes point four and two point back. When I lay eggs, I think it best to lay them in some other nest. I'm very famous for my clock, but this is what I find a shock. Of all the birds that sail and swoop, why should my name mean nincompoop? Thank you. 
In a soup of a swamp in my kingdom, Caribbean, where you've never been because you're not an amphibian, everyone calls me the fabulous frog, for my digits are webbed to hold on to my log. And I don't need a tail, but my tongue is so awesome, I pick little bugs the way you'd pick a blossom. I puff out my throat, but don't try it, you'll choke. And I let out a purely fantabulous croak. If you heard it, you'd probably fall on your knees. There have been occasions it toppled the trees. Oh, it ripples and tickles the length of the bog. It's no wonder a prince would turn into a frog. <laughs> I had are a giggling gaggle. They peck and scratch and screech and haggle. And when I get a hankering for them, I call them with my cockalorum. And if some noisy chanticleer comes by and spoils the atmosphere, I kick up my claws and whoop him good, cause I'm the cock of this neighborhood. <laughs> don't give a hoot. My voice is light, my step staccato, my plumage bright, and here's my motto. Pop your breast and shake your tail and thank your stars you're born a quail. <laughs> Exhausted. I can't move a muscle, oh my. I wore myself out on a morsel of gristle, that's why. I'm thinking of giving my paws a good washing, perhaps. 
or maybe just crashing because I am smashing at naps. I'd jump on the shelf, but I can't really bother. No, sir. What's that on the letter? A feather? See whether I purr. <laughs> of the living room. With my Admiral Frog and my Colonel Cat and a rooster feather in my hat, I install my troops on the Persian rug. Then I aim and fire at a flying bug. I advance at a crawl. I creep and crouch. I yell, attack! And I take the couch. So rummy tum tum, boom diddy boom, I'm off to invade the dining room. The mazurka from Poland, the can-can from France, the maypole, the polka, the waltz, and the jig. The Hungarian chartist is still very big. In old Puerto Rico, they shake to the bomba, whereas in Brazil, they go in for the samba. In Bali, the gong. Madrid, the fandango. In Moscow, the troika. Cordoba, the tango. And if you don't know how to dance, you just fake it. For even in breakdance, you don't really break it. So get up and swing, do si do or gabot. Go ballet or belly, but give it a shot. Instruments. 
So uh, this one cracks me up quite a bit. The trombone kazoo, because of course that's completely absurd. It's a kazoo. But you can get your own at West Music. <laughs> and then the melodica. Yeah. Uh, I've heard great music performed on the melodica, but ours unfortunately is not of the highest quality. Well, yeah. <laughs> Or was it just the, the artist play? I don't know. It's hard to know. say. Oh, yeah. come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, our next uh, uh, non traditional presentation of a Baroque work uh, <laughs> will be um, uh, a Bach sonata for viola da gamba and harpsichord, obbligato. So, um, the sonata you just heard, the Bieber, was a sonata for solo violin and basso continuo. Oh. Um, and that means that I was playing the left hand of the harpsichord part, and Bieber didn't compose uh, the right hand of the harpsichord part. He just wrote figured bass underneath the bass line, and a harpsichordist would, would choose the appropriate chords and, and texture himself. There is another kind of sonata for Baroque sonata for solo instrument and accompaniment, and that is the sonata with, uh, for the solo instrument and harpsichord obligato. In that case, the harpsichord part is a bass line, just like I just played, but the right hand, instead of being chords, is, is an individual line. So in essence, it becomes a three-part invention. And uh, I've been... Um, uh, thinking about this since my undergraduate days. Um, and uh, When was that? Uh, a long <laughs> time ago. And um, uh, studying these, the three gamba sonatas. Um, and I've always thought that it would be fun to present them this way. So our first season as directors of Red Cedar Chamber Music 2016-17, um, I got to fulfill my dream. We had a wonderful guest artist, Isaac Pastor Shermack, come and play the continuo, the, the left hand of the piano, as Adrian is going to do today. And Mira played the right hand, and I played the solo part. And we performed all three sonatas and uh, recorded them. And, and we've actually been working on editing that to get it out to our, uh, our audience um, at concerts. Um, but at any rate, this is uh, something that we have done not just with the three gamba sonatas, but with two different violin sonatas and two different flute sonatas. There are a total of 13 of these sonatas by Bach for a solo instrument and harpsichord obligato. And we think it's a tremendous opportunity to have real instrumental chamber music by Bach at our disposal, because almost any three co combination of any three instruments would work. Um, so, at any rate, we hope you'll enjoy this, um, the first Gamba Sonata in G major. It's four movements, um, moderate tempo, fast, slow, fast. <laughs>
Yeah. Great job, Adrian. You're almost done, Adrian. All you have to do is titles now. Yeah. You still have to pay attention, though, okay? No phone. So. Only one more work left for you today, but it's a biggie. Beethoven's Trio. It's in four movements. Uh, fast, slow, no, fast, slow, slow <laughs> fast, and faster. Yeah, fast, slow, fast, <laughs> yeah. Something like Something that. Something like that. <laughs> they have a program. Um, so uh, this has been a, a crazy season for every arts organization. Um, and we have been really fortunate to be able to continue to perform um, because we live with other string players um, and because, frankly, uh, as an organization, we're married, we're a couple, we work from, from our home all the time. We just usually take ourselves to the audience. Um, but we have been very fortunate to have just great support from our board and from so many individuals and corporations and foundations. And um, uh, just a special thank you today to our artist sponsors for this concert, um, who were originally scheduled to be artist sponsors for physics, art, and music, but Juanita Dennert and Schultz Strings. Thank you. We really appreciate their support. Um, your comments, as always, are really important to us as we document what we've done this year and share your comments with our funders in the hopes that they will continue to support us so that we can continue to bring you free chamber music. Um, we've been very fortunate as, as an organization to, uh, to, to um, survive this time, uh, to be in pretty good shape because frankly, we have low overhead and are not terribly uh, reliant on ticket sales. This is not the case for so many arts organizations uh, that are struggling, that are not able to perform. Um, so we feel really lucky. And if you'd like to support our uh, next season's programming, please, uh, on our website, there's a Donate uh, Now button or in the comments below. Feel free to in make a gift box. in the description of this, this, uh, this link. Um, every gift makes a difference, no matter the size, and we appreciate them all. Um, next season will be our 25th season as an organization. It will be Mira's and my fifth season as directors. Um, we have a great season planned. You won't be surprised to know to hear that we have uh, created a new, uh, a new online concert series called Hearth and Home. Um, and we will bring you four programs, whether or not we can do so in person, we'll definitely do it uh, at least virtually. Um, and we look forward to, to that season. This, our current season will end, the end of the fiscal year is Tuesday, and we are, um, well, we're going out with a bang. So here is Beethoven's String Trio, Opus 9, number one. A youthful work, but with all the charisma of any great Beethoven.
<laughs> Come on up here, Adrian. <laughs> nice job, my boy. Take another bow. Yeah. <clears throat> thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And this concludes our 2019-2020 season. Uh, it's been a wild ride, as Carrie said, but it's also been great in many ways. We'll be back in the fall with more programs.